Hello and welcome to this first video of the lesson, Pricing and Valuation in Life Insurance. The objective of this video is to introduce the learner to the basic elements involved in the pricing and benefits of life insurance contracts. Here we will discuss the elements that constitute the premium and the concept of surplus and bonus. The following topics will be covered here. Let us first begin by understanding what premium is. In simple language, the term premium denotes the price that is paid by an insured for purchasing an insurance policy. Premiums are paid in advance at the start of the year from which the risk commences. The rates that are printed in the tables are known as office premiums. They are typically level annual premiums that need to be paid every year. They are in most cases same throughout the term and are expressed as an annual rate. Life insurance companies may also offer certain types of rebates on the premium that is payable. There are two types of rebates. First is rebate for sum assured. This is offered to those who buy policies with higher amounts of sum assured. And second is rebate for mode of premium. Here premiums can be annually, half-yearly, quarterly or monthly paid. More frequent the mode, more is the cost of service. Insurers encourage half-yearly or annual premium payments by paying some rebate as they enable a saving in administrative costs as compared to quarterly or monthly modes. Extra charges are divided into two parts. First is the standard lives. This includes a group of insured individuals who are not subject to any significant factors that would pose an extra risk. Ordinary rates are charged on standard life individuals. Second is the substandard lives. If a person is suffering from certain health problems like heart ailments or diabetes that can pose a hazard to the life, an extra premium will be imposed upon him by way of a health extra on substandard lives. This is known as extra charges. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Pricing and Valuation in Life Insurance, we will learn how to determine the premium. Let us now examine how life insurers arrive at the rates that are presented in the premium tables. The process of setting the premium considers following elements mortality, interest, expenses of management, reserves and bonus loading. Let us begin by understanding mortality and interest. Mortality is the first element required for calculating the premiums. It is the chance or likelihood that a person of a certain age would die during a given year. It is determined by using a mortality table which gives an estimate of the rate of mortality for different ages. Higher the mortality rate in the mortality table, higher is the premium. Interest is simply the discount rate that we assume for arriving at the present value of future claim payments that have to be made. Higher the interest rate assumed, lower the premium. Next, we will learn about net premium and office premium. The estimates of mortality and interest give the net premium, which is the estimate of present value of future claim costs. The discounted present value of all future claim liabilities gives the net single premium. It is the net single premium which is labeled out so as to be payable over the premium paying term. Office premium is the addition of net premium and an amount called loading. Now let us learn about the guiding principles for determining amount of loading. There are three guiding principles. First is adequacy. This is the total loading from all policies that must be sufficient to cover the company's total operating expenses. 
it should also provide a margin of safety and contribute to the profits or surplus of the company. Second is equity. Expenses and safety margins, etc., should be equitably apportioned among various kinds of policies depending on type of plan, age and term, etc. The idea is that each class of policy should pay for its own costs so that to the extent possible, one class of policy does not subsidize the other. Last is competitiveness. The resulting gross premiums should enable the company to improve its competitive position. If the loading is too high, it would make the policies very costly and people would not buy. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Pricing and Valuation in Life Insurance, we will learn the operating expenses incurred by insurer and loading of premium. There are various types of operating expenses that life insurers have to incur, such as agents training and recruitment, commissions of agents, staff salaries, office accommodation, office stationery, electricity charges, and other miscellaneous expenses. All these have to be paid from premiums that are collected by insurers. These expenses are loaded to the net premium. A life insurer incurs two major types of expenses. First is the new business expenses, which are incurred at the beginning stage of the contract. And second is the renewal expenses, which are incurred during subsequent years. The typical expenses loaded to the net premium are as follows. First, a percentage of premiums, that is commissions and incentives for agency managers or development officers are typically decided as a percentage of the premiums earned. Second, a constant amount of each 1,000 sum assured or face amount is added to the net premium. Expenses like medical examiner's fees and policy stamps vary depending on the amount of sum assured. Third, a constant amount per policy, that is, expenses like salaries and rents, that generally vary with the amount of activities. These, in turn, depend upon the number of policies being serviced. More the number of policies, higher the overhead expenses. Participation and profits also ushered an element called bonus loading into premiums. The idea was to provide a margin for profits as a loading in the premium, such that it served as an added cushion against unforeseen contingencies and also paid for the policy's share of surplus distributed as bonus. Next, we will learn about loading of contingencies. Apart from expenses, the life insurer also constantly faces the risk that actual experience may be different from the assumptions made at the stage of designing the contract. To understand contingencies, we must be acknowledged with the concept of lapse, which means that the policyholder discontinues payment of premiums, and withdrawals, which means that the policyholder surrenders the policy and receives an amount from the policy's acquired cash value. Lapses can pose a serious problem because they typically happen within the first three years with highest incidence being typically in the very first year of the contract. Life insurers incorporate a loading in the anticipation of leakages that may arise as a result. Therefore, gross premium equals to the addition of net premium, loading for expenses, loading for contingencies, and bonus loading. Thank you. In this last video of the lesson, Pricing and Valuation in Life Insurance, we will learn about surplus and bonus and how it affects the insurer and the policyholders. The following topics will be covered here. Let us begin by understanding the basic concept of surplus and bonus. Surplus is the excess of value of assets over value of liabilities. If it is negative, 
it is known as a strain. Every life insurance company is expected to undertake a periodic valuation of its assets and liabilities. Such a valuation has two purposes. First, to assess the financial state of the life insurer. In other words, to determine if it is solvent or insolvent. And second, to determine the surplus available for distribution among policyholders or shareholders. The assets can be valued in the following ways. First, at book value. This is the value at which the life insurer has purchased or acquired its assets. Second, at market value. This is the worth of the life insurer's assets in the marketplace. And last, at discounted present value, which is estimating the future income stream from various assets and discounting them to the present. Now we will look at the process of allocating the surplus. Whenever the surplus arises, the life insurer is obliged to pass on this benefit to policyholders who have purchased these with profit policies. At the same time, surplus is also a source for increasing the company's basic capital. It contributes to the life insurer's financial soundness. Let us now look at the methods of allocating the surplus. First, solvency requirements. Life insurers have to maintain a solvency margin, which may be defined as the portion of surplus assets over liabilities that are specifically set aside to serve as a cushion to meet any unforeseen deviations between expected and actual experience. And second, free assets. Another purpose for having surplus that is unallocated is to increase the level of free assets. Free assets are unencumbered, that is they are not required for meeting any specific liabilities. The life insurer is thus free to use them for various purposes like business expansion, etc. Now that we understand what surplus means, let us take a look at what bonus is and its types. Bonus is paid as an addition to the basic benefit payable under a contract. The most common form of bonus is the reversionary bonus. It is called reversionary bonus because the policyholder only receives it when the contract becomes a claim by death or maturity. The various types of reversionary bonus include First, terminal bonus. This bonus attaches to the contract only on its contractual termination by death or maturity. The bonus is declared only for claims of the ensuing year without any commitment about subsequent years. Thus, the terminal bonus declared for 2013 would only apply to claims that have arisen during 2013-14 and not for subsequent years. Terminal bonus depends upon the time duration of the contract and it increases as the duration increases. Second, super compound bonus. In this, the bonus is arrived at as a percentage of basic benefit and applying another percentage for attached bonus. Third, compound bonus. Here the company expresses a bonus as a percentage of basic benefit and already attached bonuses. It is thus a bonus on a bonus. A way to express it may be at the rate of 8% of basic sum assured plus attached bonus. And fourth, simple reversionary bonus. This is a bonus expressed as a percentage of the basic cash benefit under the contract. In India, for example, it is declared as amount per thousand sum assured. Let us now understand the contribution method. Under this method, consideration is given to three sources of surplus. Excess interest, mortality savings, and savings arising with respect to expense and other loadings. The surplus is thus given by the difference between what was expected to happen and what actually happened over the year with respect to mortality 
interest and expenses. Finally, let us look at unit link policies and its principles. ULIP premium comprises of policy allocation charge, investment risk premium and mortality charge. They involve a different approach to design the products and follow a different set of principles which are as follows. First, unitizing. The distinctive feature of these policies is that their benefits are wholly or partially determined by the value of its units credited to the policyholder's account at the date when the claim payment is due. Second, transparent structure. Policyholder benefits do not depend on the assumptions and discretions of the life insurance company. The structure should be made transparent. Third, pricing. In unit-linked policies, the insured decides what amount of premium he or she can contribute at regular intervals. The insurance cover is a multiple of premiums paid. And fourth, bearing of investment risk. The investment risk is borne by the policyholder. Since the value of the units depend on the value of the life insurer's investments, there is a risk that these unit values may be lower than expected. The life insurer does not give any guarantee about the unit values. Here is a quick look at the topics covered in this chapter. Thank you.